the killing next door. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special edition of A Current Affair. I'm Steve Dunleavy, and Mario's off tonight. Maybe it got national attention because it had been such an ordinary street with ordinary people, and that scares us. It left two families devastated in a community where these things are not supposed to happen. White sands of innocence stretch 118 miles on the longest island of these United States, where 2.8 million people live side by side in what is perhaps the largest body of middle-class Americans in the country. They are the refugees of the grit, grime, and crime of New York City. But the people of Long Island, who live in a sort of California of the Northeast, left all that behind. The kids wear braces on their teeth, and their parents vote straight Republicans. They live only an hour away from the core of a sometimes rotting apple on idyllic tree-lined streets. And perhaps of all the middle-class idyllic streets in Long Island, Horton Road here in Valley Stream could not have been more typical as the place where the neighbors would celebrate carpooling their kids to Little League games. And in the summer, the smoke would mingle with laughter and waft across the roofs of these immaculate houses. Remember, these people were refugees from the grit, grime, and crime of New York City, a good place to live. And then in one grisly stroke, the people of Horton Road awoke one day to discover that murder was an equal opportunity visitor, and loving thy neighbor sometimes can be an extraordinary task for ordinary folks. March 4, 1989, the weather unseasonably warm, but within a few seconds, a cold blast of horror would chill the hearts of the people of Horton Road Valley Stream. She was just like an angel, really. I mean, she really never did anything wrong. A young girl, which any man my age would accept as a granddaughter any time. Kelly Ann Tinius, sexually mutilated beyond description. Her body had been found stuffed in a blood-soaked sleeping bag in a neighbor's basement. It was her 14th birthday. You didn't see his face. He could care less. Straight as a pen. He could care less. That's from the devil. You could see the devil right in his face. Kelly Ann was shockingly mutilated. She looked me dead straight in the eye and told me, you had nothing to do with it. Oh, oh I'm certainly not capable of doing anything like that. Robert Gollum, 10 days ago, was sentenced to 25 years to life for the murder of pretty little Kelly Ann Tinius in an attack which rocked the neighborhood to its very foundation, throwing the gentle people of Horton Road into a morass of ugly bitterness. I can't wait till you go to jail. I can't wait till you go to jail. You look like a devil. Kelly Ann, you shoot! Get out! 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 I never thought I was going to go through anything like this during my lifetime. What is your verdict? Guilty. <laughs> the murder shocked sentencing judge Marvin Goodman to the point of revulsion. The acts which you committed in this case are by far the most atrocious that I've ever experienced in my 17 years as a judge. And the manner in which you kill Kelly Antinian and mutilate her body surpasses the worst murders known to this county. I did not kill Kelly Antinian. Outside the court, the family of the dead girl exploded in rage. When I talked to Robert Gollop in Nassau County Prison last week, it was hard to grasp that the soft-spoken 22-year-old had been convicted of acts that could trigger nausea. A very nice girl from my neighborhood is dead, but I'm just not responsible. I'm doing everything I can to prove that innocence. And hopefully the right person will be brought to justice. That'll just be better than, you know, Robert Gould going home. I really don't think uh, that's a goal in this case for a lot of people. But uh, there just has to be that change. There has to be Robert Gould uh, vindicated and the right person brought to justice. And I'll be happy. You totally deny any connection with the murder of young Kelly Anthony. Oh, that's correct. If you didn't do it, who did? My theory is it had to be somebody who knew her, because uh, the DA in this case presented uh, a sexual motive, and there wasn't any indication of that. Uh, I mean, it could have been, uh, but I don't really think it was, based upon the evidence that was presented. I think it was 
I don't know, maybe an act of revenge. Maybe, I think it definitely had to be someone who knew her because of the circumstances surrounding it. Anyone who did that to Kellyanne was certainly not the same human being. Oh, definitely not. And the act of savagery was, well, we don't want to go into it, but it was a profound and rare act of savagery. That's right. Did you see pictures of the deceased? Yes, I, I, I had to because of, uh, you know, to prepare my case and, uh, you know, it was uncomfortable to look at. Prosecuting attorney Dan Cotter gave a grim scenario in court of how little Kellyanne was slashed, strangled and beaten to death. What must have been the last minutes of her life sickened even hardened cops. She was sexually mutilated with a knife and deep bite marks were embedded in her body. How would you describe the kind of person who killed Kellyanne? I really have, I don't think I've come in contact with uh, the person who did this or the likes of the person who did this in my entire life. I really don't know what, what these people would be like on the outside. If Robert Golub was sitting here right now, what would you say to him? Right now, I saved the death penalty before anything happened to my daughter. And now? And now, I put the, I pull the switch myself. Well, Robert Golub is rotting in a kind of hell. And in its own way, so is Horton Road, Long Island. A look at a street dying of bitterness and tragedy. After this. There's nothing like the distinct sound of a mother's voice. So we asked one to call her kids. The youngsters flew right by other cordless phones for what clearly sounded like the real thing, the AT&T Cordless 5000 series with new Clarity Plus sound to virtually eliminate static. The difference between theirs and ours is clear. In today's competitive car market, there's one place that gives you the advantage. The advantage of Dodge Spirit, more interior room, a standard driver's airbag, and a lower price than Honda Accord. Now there's a great selection of spirits, some as low as $213 a month. The advantage of Dodge Shadow, more horsepower, and a longer powertrain warranty than Honda Civic DX Hatchback. There's hundreds in stock, some as low as $180 a month. For the cars that beat the Honda, it's advantage Dodge. ShopRite answers the question on everyone's list. What's for dinner, eh? Is that all? This week, surf and turf lovers will love ShopRite. Large white shrimp for $5.67 a pound. USDA choice trim and lean beef loin T-bone or porterhouse steaks are $3.99 a pound. And Maxwell House coffee is $1.99. We save you money. ShopRite does it right. Touchstone Pictures presents Betsy's Wedding. Jake and I are getting married. It won't be your average affair. Oh, my God. Because they're not your average family. This is a family of lunatics. Thank you. One daughter's a cop. I just love arresting people. The other one's from Mars. <laughs> and him, he's a real peach. Alan Alda. I went into hot for this wedding. Molly Ringwald. I'm going to throw up all over the bridesmaids. Betsy's Wedding. This film has not yet been rated. Start Friday, June 22nd at a theater near you. You know, some neighborhoods are so close, they become like a family. And when death comes to any family, it's tragic. But when the killer comes from that same family, grief has no limit. Horton Road in Valley Stream, Long Island, was such a family. And then came March 4, 1989. When Kellyanne Tinia's frail and defiled body was laid to rest, it not only slashed the very nerve endings of family and friends, but through a long pall over Horton Road, from which some believe it will never recover. Family against family, neighbor against neighbor. We cannot come in and out of our house without being harassed by young children, by adults, threatening our bodies, damaging my home. Mrs. Elizabeth Gollop would lose 40 pounds as she suddenly became a pariah in the neighborhood. I would ask the neighbors to put away their hatred and their violence. 
because violence beguiles violence before something more tragic and equally as tragic happens, which they will be guilty of because you cannot stand by and let things like this happen before there's an explosion. Richard Tinius, father of Kellyanne, the man who has borne the ultimate loss. Oh, she's beautiful, caring, young woman, vibrant, full of energy. Uh, not the words can't describe her. This beautiful young woman. We've been the victim over and over and over again. Uh, and they have shown no remorse since the beginning. You know, I tell them I really still feel lost. It's not that I'm unfeeling. But then again, then again, the case has been brought against me. So I have to do the best to conquer first the accusations, the finger pointing. And then secondly, I have to express my emotions to them. And it's very hard because, uh, you know, what they've been doing to people that are really close to them. Even in court, old friends were pitted against each other. Defense attorney Sal Marinello once shared an office with prosecutor Dan Cotter. And he claims Horton Road is putting Golub's parents on trial. If they truly believe the defendant committed this crime, then and certainly the, the anger, uh, the harassment, uh, and the anguish uh, should be directed uh, not to Mr. and Mrs. Golub, but to the person that uh, the people believe committed this crime. Unfortunately, that's not the case here. A very nice girl from our neighborhood uh, died, and I have as much sympathy for her as anybody else. But at the same time, I believe that even if the Tinius family uh, believed in the worst way I was the one who committed this crime, they still shouldn't uh, take out on my parents what they believe was an act of mine. Everybody go to Horton Road! They're in that house! We want them out! Some of the neighbors of Horton Road have taken it out on Robert Golub's parents. One side window of their house has been broken so regularly that John Gollop believes it is useless to put a new window in. The house has been pelted with eggs, telephone calls and screams of abuse are constant. Come on out! Get me! Come on out! Battle zone isn't the word for it. There's daily harassment. It is difficult for anyone to understand the intensity of hatred on that street. But then, it is not difficult to understand how decent people can behave indecently when you recognize that a little innocent girl was stolen from life. You look into a room and it's empty. Oh, uh, you don't hear her voice no more. And uh, how do you say happy birthday to her? You can't say happy birthday to a, to, to a tombstone. We're the ones that are being harassed by the gallop. These people are, are, are crazy. Robert Gollop believes he is serving two sentences battling jail time and battling the anguish over his parents. Every time I see them or speak to them, I try to put my spirits a little higher than they really are, you know, just, uh, so they don't worry so much about me. Richard Tinya's hatred for the Golub family is so overwhelming that he has set up a fund to buy the Golubs out of their house, which is only five doors from his house. There's a lot of people out there that hate the Golubs, that feel that they shouldn't be there. Not only us or the, or the block, and we've got thousands of letters um, and that's why one of the reasons they set up the Kelly Tinius Memorial Fund to buy the house, to get him out of there. But it is hard to mention that to Mrs. Elizabeth Gollum, who has become a splinter of a woman, consumed only with her daily visits to a nearby Catholic church. Living in this house is not the nightmare. I'm at peace in this house. People cannot understand it. I'm at peace with Kelly, because Kelly knows I did the very best I could to find out what happened. I'm at peace with myself so I can live in this house. My nightmare is walking into and out of this house. The Golub's nightmare is softened by letters of support that they, like the Tinius family, receive. It's as if the whole world is getting in on this nasty brawl. I truly believe in Robert Tinius. I hope that you have the opportunity to visit with your son. I would greatly appreciate your telling him that there is something who believes in him. I really don't feel for myself too much. I really feel for my family, the people that are worrying about me, that care about me. I think that's, that's where my biggest problem lies. And of course, what about the Tinnies family? Well, that's a hard question because I have mixed emotions about that. I mean, I feel very strong, as strong as anybody about the death of their, you know, their, their young girl. But at the same token, the things that, I mean, they do to my, my family, my parents, my mother and father. That's, that's, 
kind of, you know, it's kind of mixed emotions with that. Now, Robert Golub was found guilty by a jury of 12, but his family is still being judged by another jury. These people are, are, are crazy. Tonight, one man framed Hanson for murder, cost Booker his badge, and gunned down Aoki. I almost died because of Raymond Crane. Richard Grieco and the cops of Jump Street are reunited in a ride for revenge. This ride is going to separate the men from the boys. 21 Jump Street. Then, video phone sex is the latest rage. What kind of sick mind would do something like this? But someone is taking his fantasy too far. Beginning tonight at 8 on Fox 5. Come on, come on, come on. I know there's one. Ah, yes. We're in luck, Mr. Cheney. We have one room left. Thanks, Donna. I hate to turn guests away, particularly our regulars. Sometimes they don't make reservations. It's too busy. I can usually get them a room at the Holiday, but they have to pay more. Room 312. Maybe that's one reason we're full. Ramada, for the people who get it done. Yeah, we're having a problem with the car. It sounds like... It doesn't sound like that. It's... At Meineke, we can't always tell what's wrong with a car by the sound of the customer. But we can tell a lot from our free undercar inspection. We check your exhaust system, shocks, brakes, and more at no charge. We'll show you what's wrong and what's right. Then you'll know the price before any work begins. We have a muffler for this. So bring your car to Meineke. We'll give you a lift without taking you for a ride. Listen, if you need new home furnishings, I mean living room, dining room, bedroom, tables, wall units, dinettes, bedding, anything for your home, well, you need to plan right now to join the crowd today or tomorrow at Siemens. It's going to end Wednesday. Siemens, all 30 locations in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, pulling out all the stops with that $50 million wall-to-wall -wall furniture clearance. Everything's reduced. Siemens' lowest prices of the season, but it ends Wednesday. Join the crowds today, tomorrow. Some sacks just aren't me, but Whitechapel's pickup pack sacks are me, and they could be you. You could be taking home 100% beef hamburgers, steam grilled on a bed of onions, golden fries, and delicious soft drinks in these great sacks. <laughs> so tear out to White Castle for the sacks that fit your taste and your head. <laughs> Get real. Snack pack $1.99, eight pack $4.89, family pack $8.49, 20 pack $9.99. The packs are back. White Castle. Psychopathic killer or the victim of a great injustice. It's a nightmare for two families on Horton Road. For Kelly Antinius, it's too late. For Robert Golub, well, time will tell. What is your verdict? Guilty. A jury of his peers has assured that Robert Golub's most constant companion for the next 25 years will be jailhouse bars. But Golub says that the shock of jail doesn't compare with the shock he felt on March 4th of last year when Kellyanne Tenya's body was found in his basement. The first day I was here, I was looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, the next day, I was looking forward to the next. And after a while, I just, I guess it was an, an ease into the system for me, so it wasn't that much of a shock. But just the idea of, I mean, I mean the biggest shock was on March 4th. It's not the, uh, the idea of being here day by day that's a, that's a shock. I mean, it's definitely, um, uncomfortable. It's frustrating. It's ang you know, it angers me, but I think the biggest shock came uh, for me on March 4th. I think I could deal with it better if I thought he was guilty. But facing 25 years and believing he's innocent, it's a little harder. It's a little different. I'll be dead when he gets out. I worry about, what well, can I leave him? And then all of my money now. All on Lloyd's room. Appeal. It's going to be costly. We're lucky enough to get granted a trial, which everybody says we'll get. It's another chunk of money. I don't mind spending. Sell my house. Mortgage my house. I don't mind. But if he's convicted and I spend all of this money, what does he have when he gets out of jail at 45, 50 years old? 
How do you leave your children with something? My daughter, I couldn't even pay for her wedding. This happened. We were supposed to pay for her wedding. This came up. The kids did it themselves. I felt like a traitor. The facts of the case are that Kellyanne Genius was seen walking into the Gollub house at quarter to three on March 3, 1989. She was never seen alive again. There was no eyewitness to the murder. No murder weapon found. The prosecution built its case, in part, on evidence that included a palm print found in the basement and teeth marks on Kelly's body, which prosecution experts said matched Gollub. Gollub was convicted on circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence is sometimes, and in this case, is, is a lot more damning than a lot of things. I mean, the circumstantial evidence here was overwhelming. Defense attorney Sal Marinella, who is appealing the conviction, claims the evidence was weak and inconclusive. I think we raised doubt in every portion of the prosecutor's case, and that, that holds true for the DNA evidence in the case, the so-called blood evidence having to do with genetic markers in the case, it holds true with uh, the dental evidence in the case. Is that palm print? You say that was an old palm print? Oh, I'm not sure if it was old or new, but it certainly wasn't the result of any activity in the basement on March 3rd. Mr. Gollub says there was a prowler in the neighborhood at the time of the murder and that there was easy access to his basement from the street. I believe this was done by an intruder or possibly somebody that she knew and that they stayed in my house until we all went to sleep. But a jury spoke as one. Guilty. Robert Gollub's a, uh, a psychopath. Uh, um, that he has a personality disorder uh, that makes him an antisocial individual. And he has a personality uh, problem. Uh, he's a typical of, of someone who really has no conscience. Uh, he has no remorse for anything he does to somebody else. He's a very rational person. He's an intelligent person. And uh, frankly speaking, if I were in his shoes and his position, having been charged with, with this uh, crime, I don't know if I could have maintained the same kind of presence and the same kind of rationality that he exhibited in, in this case. I've known him since um, probably about second grade or third grade. And he's friendly, funny, respectable. He's polite. He's just an overall gentleman, nice kid. Robert. This time next year, where do you believe you'll be? Oh, I hope I'll be with my family, my friends. I hope this will all be behind us. It'll never really all be behind us. But uh, we'll try to make the best out of this tragedy that we can. Friends of Kellyanne who commemorate her birthday by sending balloons aloft hope that day will never come. <laughs> On this longest of islands, where the middle class seek refuge from grit, grime, and crime, two families battle each other. A young man who claims he's innocent battles for his freedom. But the battle is long over for Kellyanne Tin, who was robbed of her 14th summer, robbed forever. Terribly sad story for everybody in that community. Back after this. And now, the one and only Planters present Everybody Loves the Nuts. I think the taste of Planters lightly salted nuts is so uplifting, I'm going to levitate this peanut. <laughs> Thank you. As the great taste of planters proves, we're the reason everybody loves the nuts. This soap, they say the little people put a spell on it so the scent of it could last a man clean through the day. Ah, capture the lasting scent of Irish spring deodorant soap. The Irish never quit. The bill's twice as big as usual. Because, honey, you ate twice as much. With extra strength, Tums EX, even twice the heartburns, no sweat. It's twice as strong, twice as fast as regular Rolaids. Try 
massage you on just how much car you're getting and how little you're getting from the Japanese car, which is something I never expected. In an independent test, Plymouth Acclaim was picked over Honda Accord. I really want to like an American car, and they've given me the opportunity to do so. Meet the American that beat the Honda, Plymouth Acclaim. For overall superiority, it beat Honda Accord, and Acclaim cost $2,500 less. <laughs> Now it's easy to own a winner with $750 cash back. New Mark and Lewis will beat any competitor's price that is advertised in any one of the 477 newspapers in the tri-state area. We'll beat any price in Newsday, The Daily News, New York Times, New Haven Register, and The Star Legend. That's right, I mean any advertised price by anyone. Newmark and Lewis will beat it. I personally guarantee it. Ah, this is the way nature intended it to be. Simple, pure, perfect. This is turkey at its very best. Tender, juicy turkey parts fresh from the farm. The farm by the bridge that shades the brook. Shady Brook Farms. In this whole world, there is no better turkey. The loss of Marilyn Monroe has been examined by a medium microscope since the day she died. And tomorrow, a look at all the evidence from a special investigation. Marilyn Monroe, America's most tragic love goddess. An intimate look at the celebrated life and mysterious death of Marilyn. The official report said suicide, but while millions grieved around the world, some intimates were hiding the real truth. The fix was in. It was not to be investigated and not to be exposed. Marilyn, the case for murder. That's on tomorrow's show. Thanks for being with us. Mario will be back tomorrow. Good night. Tonight on Newsline New York, we'll have more of that exclusive interview with Robert Golub, who's doing 25 years to life for the murder of Kellyanne Pinion. Golub talks about why he believes he was framed for a crime he still maintains he never committed at 11 on Fox 5. I'm gone. July on AMC. And for more on the stars, write for American Movie Classics magazine. Send 11.95 to PO Box 2. Too long or too ambitious. 18 HBO cameras are set up to capture every moment of the show. And in many areas, you'll be able to listen to every note of the show in Dolby Surround and enjoy an FM simulcast. At this moment, backstage 125 production people are putting finishing touches on the lighting, the makeup, and the wardrobe. Her singers, dancers, and musicians are warming up, and Madonna herself is prepared to take the stage for one final turn as the star of the Blonde Ambition World Tour 90. I hope you're as thrilled as I am to be a part of this music history-making event. And if you're ready, let's do it. Sit back and relax, or strike a pose and let's get to it. Enjoy Madonna live on the French Riviera.